Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Lathrix. And of course, welcome to a little bit of a project I've been working on slightly off camera whilst I've been a little bit under the weather. Finally, I am healthy enough to do a longer recording session, which are always needed when you're doing From the Depths, because even doing small things takes a very long time. And today, we're going to be rather ambitious. The main goal of today is to build an all-terrain vehicle which can go from the land and into the water and make it viable for combat in both of these scenarios. Currently, I've spawned in the Scarbrand turret just to show off the general idea we're going to be going with. We're going to essentially make it quite mech-like. We're going to have a main torso on top and then a very heavily defensive, very energy-rich vehicle on the bottom which will act as our propulsion and the ability to get onto the land, off the land, you get the idea, it moves us around. Now the reason why I'm doing it like this as well is because of course, sadly in this game, you can't really make the more traditional mech types. This is really all you're going to be able to do, and since a lot of people wanted to see that as well, I thought why not combine my new project with the idea of a mech. So I'm going to get rid of the Scarbrand turret in just a second, and then we're going to have a look at the plans for the current vehicle. So here we are with the skeleton of the vehicle I'm currently building. So the idea is actually incredibly simple and if it works then I will be incredibly happy and if it doesn't I have some other ideas in case it simply goes awry. So the basic premise is that in the center we are going to have our turret which is going to hold the other vehicle. The other vehicle will be holding all of the weaponry but none of the movement parts and likely no no power generation of its own. Thankfully, you can transfer power from the main body into the side body, so that's absolutely fine. In case I want to add shields to it or anything like that, it'll, it will be very, very easy to do. In terms of actually making this float, that's actually the easiest part. All we are going to use is the PID system and advanced control blocks to have a turbine somewhere in the middle and then on both of the edges and likely on the sides. All of these will be connected to each other so that the overall vehicle will be kept at zero in terms of elevation. This means when it's on land, which is always above zero, it will be forced down, which will hopefully help the wheels to stick to the ground, and then when it goes into the water, it will simply glide on the sort of surface. Hopefully not too much of the top of the vehicle will be actually sticking out of the water, and if it is, we can always change the numbers around so that once again our rotors will push us back down and so most of this will be protected by the water itself, which of course helps with lasers and all sorts of stuff like that. I don't plan on adding any weaponry to the base vehicle, because that just means I have to have ammo, it's more explosive, it's more complex, I just don't think that's needed. I do of course have all of these lovely repair tentacles and repair bots, which will make it incredibly hardy. I also haven't added most of the armor yet, so I will have extra armor on the sides and extra armor on the bottom, even though already the bottom is is three layers thick, other than the very edges which goes down to two because of the wheel placement. So I will be right back, I need to do a little bit of shaping with this, I need to add the shields and yeah, I also need to add the, the turbines at the back, the rotors, the... where are you? The propellers, wow, every other word for them but the correct one. I need to add the propellers because, of course, when it's in the water, it does need to be able to move. When it's above the water, on land, I'm going to add a few turning thrusters because I don't trust the turning wheels on something so heavy. They tend to cause it to flip over or just go a little bit mad. So propellers when it's in the water and then thrusters when it's above the water, which hopefully I can control fairly easily. Why do 90% of my designs, at least in the first few stages, always look like I'm building it back to front. Because right now, this really looks like the front, and this really looks like the back. And that is somewhat annoying. On the upside, I was just about to tear this down anyway, so I do have at least some time to redeem myself. 
about 20 minutes later and now a lot of the basic systems have been installed. It was rather boring footage, so most likely completely cut out. I have added a ridiculous amount of armour to the front, a lot of armour to the back and a little bit extra to the sides. Even though it is just regular metal, this is going to be very hard to kill unless it's a dedicated armour piercing round, which is very good because it means things like missiles and torpedoes won't be quite as effective against the base of this vehicle. As you can probably hear, I have now added the rotor blades as well into the centre of the craft, which should hopefully be able to keep this thing floating and be able to keep it rather stable on land when the wheels are actually active. When they're not active, of course, this will actually cause a slide effect, which you're seeing now, because the whole craft is trying to push down, so the craft is going to the lowest point nearby. Either way, I am fairly happy with that. We still need to add the thrusters and we still need to change up the AI so that we have a modified land AI, which I believe will be the best option. We could go with naval, but I feel like that's the best idea for now. And just for a second, we're going to quickly check to make sure the internal turret will be able to spin the other vehicle. So let's spawn that in, turn off the AI, and yep, that works just fine. Only just about in range, but as you can see, that's doing a lot of damage, even though right now, those shells are actually flak. They're only flak because I wanted a weak shell to test out to make sure if we are doing any testing, we won't kill the enemy instantly, and even at maximum range, they actually seem fairly effective. So there we go, that does work. So, back to engineering our sort of very blocky looking tank. I am tempted, rather than a mech body on top, to add just a massive turret, which itself is a single vehicle. That would be ridiculously powerful. Time for the very first stress test. Let's see how it handles this. Now, this is a rather awful piece of land. So, yeah, I knew it was going to be a little, a little bit too fast. Here it goes, going into the water and turning weirdly. Why are you doing that turn? Oh, because for some reason the order was to turn that way. How bizarre. Yep, it's working. It didn't look too graceful for a second, but yep, that is completely stable. Actually, the rotor blades are too strong. I did not expect that. But as you can see, our tank was on the land, it moved into the water, and now the water is our new home. And we're actually going at a decent pace. Now that is surprising. I am so happy about that. Could do with going a little bit lower though. Honestly, the really funny thing is, this could be converted into a submarine with only one extra control block. Not even the PID system being changed, just one extra control block and this could easily be a sub. Okay, now try to go back onto the land. It seems turning is a little bit slow though, so that's something I do need to work on. I really don't think this is going to work right now because I haven't changed any of the pitch controls. In fact, there are no pitch elements at all in this craft. So as it goes towards the land, the front is going to essentially ram the land. I think it will eventually get up, but it will take a while. I've also not added the thrusters, which I really wanted for turning yet on land, so... Yeah, this is going to hurt. I'm almost convinced of it. Oh dear. Here we go. Yep, yeah, we took a little bit of damage there, but actually doing way better than expected. So there we go. Struggling now, but the rotor blade is keeping us very stable onto the ground after that, and there we are. We do indeed have a vehicle which can go from the water to the land. So... What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to add wheels all the way up here. Essentially, we're going to extend this spike, only the outer two spikes, and both of these will be covered in wheels. This way, when we go towards land, it will be the wheels which make the first connection, not the armour, and thus we don't take damage. I am really happy with this. Did not expect it to be this easy. Honestly, I thought this would be a bit more troubling. Now in slow motion going from the land to the water again.
And there we have it. Yep, it is now completely submerged. I am so happy with this. Rather than what I was going to do originally, here we are at the front of the craft, and I am going to very simply add two more sections of dedicated Hellerblade spinners, and these will control the turning whilst on land, and will also help turning when in the water. These will just be added to the control blocks, which will then be set up so that when the AI tries to go left, these will activate, and when the AI tries to turn right, they will go in reverse. And then I have the same over here as well. This is why we need the PID system set up, so that things like this, when it's sort of rolling to the side, will simply not occur, so that the vehicle on top will always be flat and thus able to aim a lot more accurately. So that's the next thing we need to set up. Right now I'm just testing if the blades at the front can be enough to control our vehicle when it is indeed on land. So there we go, breaching the surface once again. And let's say, now, sharp turn. Yep, that definitely seems like enough. I could also add some rubber to the front, honestly. That would also do the job, but I feel like the wheels should be enough. Only minor damage being taken at the moment, so it's just a few teething problems. We will fix that very, very soon. Okay, yep, the blades seem strong enough, so now let's add the PID system so this thing doesn't roll anymore. Okay, so we now have a prototype turret. Now, it's going to be incredibly inaccurate because what I've done currently in the sandbox mode is I've turned off the need for the detection systems, which is great, but the problem with this, and it's a really big problem, is that the default tracking system, which then takes over, is really bad at dealing with targets which are moving or even floating weirdly. I don't know why this is. Maybe it's just my own experience, but from what I've seen so far, it's really silly. So if the aim seems really bad, it's not the weapon, it's the detection system. Turning off. Oh wow, that's faster than expected. Okay, a bit of lag there, but let's stabilize my camera and yep. I have not set up those frags correctly, but there goes the enemy rather rapidly. Not bad for a first prototype. In fact, that did so much better than expected. I think this may be what we end up with. That is really nasty. I am really happy with that. Okay. There we are, the shell is now fixed. A lot of people do ask me, how do I set up my frag warheads? Because mine seem to do better than their own. And it seems like the two things people seem to be mostly confused about is the head type and this. The cone angle for fragment warheads is very, very effective when it's 10 or less. This means that all of the fragments are going directly forwards and essentially acting like a pin and going straight through a section of armor. Since I'm rapidly firing these, this means you can very quickly get into the core of vehicles and cause some serious damage. If it's too high, it means the damage is being too spread, which is far less effective in a shorter space of time. So this just guarantees more damage in a quicker burst. Then we use the inertial fuse and setting this to no tolerance whatsoever. This means if it hits a shield, it will detonate and the fragments will go through the, through the shield and will damage the metal. This also means that if the shell were to bounce off some very heavily armored section, once again, the shell would just detonate rather than bouncing off. It basically guarantees the fragments will hurt the enemy. And finally, please do use a head type. If you only use warheads, your accuracy is massively diminished, and then you get less of the shells actually hitting the target. This also means you have slower shells if you don't use a head, and don't underestimate the regular kinetic damage these shells will do if they're not deflected by a shield, because it's actually quite a lot when you're firing 500 plus per minute. At this point, I have to make a very important choice, and that is just how much am I willing to spend on this craft. Right now, it's a bit of a silly design, but honestly, I also feel like it's going to be one of my stronger designs, and at the moment, before the turret is completely finished, as it stands right now, it costs just over 40,000 resource. That includes the base and the turret itself. 
which is already fairly expensive. It makes it almost double the cost of our ships and almost one and a half times our sub. So it is pretty expensive as it is. The thing is though, I could go even more extreme and use a lot of heavy armor and then upgrade these turrets, these cannons on the turret, so it would be absolutely deadly. The main issue here, other than the obvious initial cost, is that already I am going to be adding a lot of shields to this thing. I have over 20,000 power right now to spend on shields, which can completely cover it in strength between 3 and 6 shields, which will make it almost impervious to all very fast moving shells, which is really good. This will, however, cost me a fortune. The amount of steam boiler power this has to actually produce, it means it's likely in battle to be burning through about 10 resource per second while it's in a fight, and that's once again not including the initial cost. So, how elite do I want this? Do I want just one of these, or do I want two? Clearly, it's going to be a unit we use later on, even though right now I'm getting a lot of money, but it's going to be a bit more of an exotic one. The sub and the regular ship, if they die, it's not too expensive. We have our kamikaze craft, which obviously are meant to die. This is going to be the big bruiser. And I'm not sure right now, I'm really not. Oh look, a tank has spawned. But look at that, I love how fast that turret turns. And there goes the enemy already. Yeah, a few problems with aiming a little bit too low, that will be fixed later, but as you can see, the amount of damage this thing can produce is immense. So I'm not too sure right now. I'm at, I'm at a little bit of a crossroads. Almost finished now, really, only the shields and a little bit more refinement of the turret are left to do. After this, we are pretty much done. Please wheels work, at least help out somewhat. My lord, they actually worked. No damage was just taken. That is unbelievably awesome. Once again though, this little segment here is so difficult for our poor little tank to actually move over. What I'm considering is adding some thrusters to the back, which will only activate when on land, or adding a Hellerblade spinner in the center at the back here, which simply pushes the entire craft forwards, as this would also work to help us out being faster on land and in the water. Right now I'm going with a quite weird movement, I just want to make sure that the land poses no real threat. Actually, let's go combat mode, but turn off the turret, and then spawn in uh, just one of the basic things again, turn off. Okay, the turret won't fire, and we should be turning, yes we are. I think the turret needs to be a little bit higher, as it is clipping a little bit with the armor around it. I am so happy with this. I can't express, though, just how happy I am. It has been a few hours now after starting this recording. It is now getting a little bit light at night, but I think it's worth it. Just because it's something I've not really built before, and the fact it's working straight away makes me incredibly happy. Still a few things, though, I do need to do to refine this. Yep, there we go, and now it just acts like a rather slow boat. And fire, go on. Did not set those missiles up yet, by the way. And instant death. I'm assuming one of the 500mm shells hit straight away. Okay. All good. Okay, this video probably isn't the longest video ever, but honestly, this has took a long time to record, a lot of messing around, and I am pretty much out of time right now. Off camera, before the next video, because next video I will be back in the actual campaign, making some progress, there are two major things, of course, we still need to do to this craft. The first of which is adding a detection system, and the second of which is adding the extra defenses. These include anti-missile missile so the missiles attached with the... what's it actually called? There's a element you can add which will actively seek other missiles, but nothing else. There we go, the missile interceptor. The interceptor gets its target from the AI's missile warning cameras, it will target a single missile at a time, and if it's within 20 meters of the target, it will detonate and potentially destroy the incoming missile. These don't normally have to be too big, and if you combine them with the sonars or radars and stuff like 
like that or even the flares, they can even distract the missile, making the enemy missile target your anti-missile missile. So all of the missiles come together in a glorious missile union and explosions are everywhere. Because let's face it, who doesn't love explosions and anti-missile missiles just seem rather interesting. So once all of that is added, and thankfully I do have a lot of space here and here for that system, and loads of space for shields both on the turret and the body, the craft is done. It's going to be incredibly hard to kill, we could even add smoke defences if we come against any lasers, but for now, that's the major things I'm going for, and it should be relatively easy, honestly. It should just take... It's easy, it will just be a little bit time consuming. So, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed the video, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff, helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that from the depth, is a series you wish to see continued in the future. Thank you so, so much for watching, and goodbye. As soon as the detection systems are in, I will be able to actually hit the target with that main gun. Thank you, and goodbye.